This is true buzz, that Mary Jane, now we ain't new to this For my stoners, and for my cannabis enthusiasts Never heard a show as good as this, yeah Number one, it's the best, bringing in many special guests In the industry of cannabis, business owners to growers Even artists you know of, so sit back and just roll up The perfect show for my smokers, True Buds Welcome to the True Buds Show it's your buddy, your host, Jack Waltering, with Alex Gatlin today. What's up, guys? Good to be here. It's Good fun to, to be you, here. Yeah, thanks, man. It's fun because I've done a little bit of engineering for your show, and now I'm on the other side. I get to be a guest, so... It's cool. It's good to have you, man. Yeah, yeah, Alex is crushing it on many angles, bro. Yeah, thanks, dude. Yeah, man, we'll talk about the cannabis in a minute, but yes. you got a couple podcasts. You're an actor, comedian, bro. That House is correct. Rules, Thin the Herd. Thank you. Yeah, yeah man. Good yeah. shout out. Yeah. Uh, Thin the Herd, it's just a podcast. I interview anybody who I think is interesting. The very loose theme, how it started, it was I was, I, I go on rants a lot, and I was just ranting one day, like, there's too many stupid people. We got to thin the herd, right? And then my fiance was like, oh, that's a good name for your podcast. I was trying to come up with a concept. But now it really is just anyone who I think is hustling to, in the vague sense, not get thinned out of the herd, like what you're doing. You built your whole brand here. I love it. True Buds TV or just anything like that. I interview those folks and then sometimes we'll pull up funny headlines and riff on that. And then the other one, House Rules, my fiance is also a comedian and we just do a weekly podcast talking about what's going on with us and like other funny stuff in the news and things of that nature. That's cool, man. Yeah. It's like a mini date every week. Huh? A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. We recap our week. Like, we just end up getting in funny situations. Like, she had a, she had a, like, recently she was in an Uber, and then she ended up, you know when you're, like, in a long Uber, sometimes you're just talking to the Uber driver, and she ended up, like, convincing this Uber driver to, like, change her career path after, like, a 40-minute ride they had <laughs> from Santa Monica back to the house, and it was just, it's, like, funnier when she tells it. But anyway, so, yeah, that, stand-up comedy, and uh, I act a little bit. Um... A little bit of voiceover work, too. Yeah, we were just talking right before this popped yeah. on about the voiceover. You got a Butterfinger commercial, Hell man. Hell yeah. It's going to be coming out. It's supposed to be out in April. It's like, you know when they like two companies do a combined ad? So it's for Final Fantasy VII and Butterfinger. Okay. So I guess, I don't know a ton about gaming, but the video game uh, Final Fantasy VII is like putting the ad on, and then Butter. it's like some kind of sponsorship with you buy Butterfinger, you can get promo codes and the downloads of the game, whatever. So you have my voice in there like, this April, game better with Butterfinger, and I just like did like a bunch of different like takes of that. It's like Final Fantasy VII. Get download codes. I don't, you get the idea. Anyway, just no, that's solid, ham it, it up. But it's funny because they they um, I will say this. I've learned a lot when and you're an actor. You know, sometimes sometimes if you're doing commercials, way different than like a scripted you know drama or comedy because typically when you're in a scripted thing that's just TV movies. There's a creative person who wrote the script, a creative person who did the directing. When it's commercial work, not saying that people at the brand aren't creatives, but their eyes and ears are a lot different. So they're kind of picking it apart purely from like a brand angle and not from a what looks good on television angle, right? So they had me do like 40 different lines, all slightly varied. And then, like, first they had me do it like an announcer. And then, like, oh, let's change it up. Make it more like frat bro guy. So then I was <laughs> like, dude, game better with Butterfinger, bro. And they just had me, like, run through a bunch. And then, so I don't know. It was cool. That's it's why fun. I like commercials, too, though. Like, I know a lot of actors will be, you know, I, I don't like commercials because yeah. there's no, like, you can't really be too artistic with mm -hmm. it. But, like, like you're saying, though, they give you a lot of room for improv. And you I don't have to memorize stuff a lot of times. And you can just riff, which is pretty cool, man. That's yeah. why I like them. I dig it. Actually, so what's so funny, man, is when I was doing this thing, the director, because he was, like, on – they were, like, live sending – like, each – cut I did they sent it over to the client at like some other site and they listened and like gave notes back so he was like yeah they want you to try it more like a frat guy and I was kind of asking questions like well, what like can you help me narrow it down and he was like honestly dude just run with it give it like <laughs> you know they pulled up a actually for like inspiration they pulled up a clip from that movie The Neighbors and they just like showed me like a scene of like Zac Efron and the other characters talking to each other and he's like there's something like this and I was like all right and I, and I must have worked because I did a bunch and they're like oh they love it this is great so yeah if you're on YouTube and you see a kid, not me, like a like a twenty year old playing video games and chomping into a butterfinger, and you hear like a deep voice. That's, that's a boy. Alex right yeah. there. Now, if you don't mind me asking, on that gig, was it a buyout or are there? Uh, it was a buyout. buyout? It was non-union. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, so it wasn't like I'm not in the union yet, but uh, it was cool. You know, it was. I, I certainly am not complaining, but it wasn't like. I'm, my lifestyle's not changing. You know what uh, I mean? Well, it's and at the very least too, it's money good experience oh, and yeah. uh 
demo reel builder. That absolutely. And yeah. When you were doing your voiceover, did you build a little reel like in the studio or did you have it or Yeah, so I've always wanted to get in the voiceover and I've had people say like, "Oh, you got like a good voice for, you know, commercials and stuff." But I didn't know what to do, so I just hit up a friend of mine who is like an audio engineer and he and I sat down and just made a fake one. So I went on on the internet and found ad copy and then like made a I figured like what ads could I do? So I did one for like Toyota trucks, one for Sam Adams, one for Taco Bell or some, some kind of fast food thing. One that's like a not like a drinking and driving PSA and one other one that's like a young dad type of thing, right? And then yeah, I just went to his home studio. He made a bunch of like fake commercially music and sound effects and we just did a bunch and that I just have that on YouTube and so I'm on all that's the a hustle, bro. That's what's up. Dude, absolutely. So now I'm on all these different um casting sites and I just see VO gigs and just submit it over and over and over again. And I've had a few that I was like kind of in the finals uh, cause they kept sending me like uh, copy to read and send back and I didn't quite get it, but um, it's interesting. There's so, I, I didn't realize like how much work there is for VO stuff. Cause a lot of apps need someone to do like, there's like a fitness app that I was, uh, I didn't get the gig, but they like had me do a bunch of reads of like, like a, like a motivational coach, like, all right, next set, get ready for push ups. time to plank. You're doing <laughs> great. And they just have me like read a bunch of those. Were they having you do that from your home or? Did yeah. You they, just, yeah they, they just have you record it. Cause they're like, cause the, for that kind of stuff, it's less of like sounding like, like how we sound great here. It's more of just getting an idea of my voice and cadence. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's cool. I really, um, I, I like it a lot because I mean, it's not like podcasting, but it's, it's a lot, it's easy in the sense of like, I just, I just talking. Right. Um, and it's just a cool skill to build, but it, I've learned there's a lot in that world. I need to still develop on just certain, my, my fiance is a professional voice actor too. She has like a way more professional, um, resume than I do. And she's done stuff for like McDonald's and other things. And, uh, it's, it's definitely not as simple as like, Oh, you just talk. Like there's a very kind of like, it's like acting, right? Yeah, it people, has to be real. People have to feel it still. Exactly. Like people who've never been on set and you know, on, like behind a ca in front of a camera rather, they don't understand. It's like, yeah, it is just like pretending to be a thing, but there's a lot that goes into it that makes it look believable or sound believable. Yeah. Yeah, if you're not feeling the butterfinger, I'll uh, go buy a butterfinger. Yeah, <laughs> and it, right. Yeah, and it was such a it's such a cadence because it's also like I had to the, the the way that the original copy was there was such like a tongue twister thing where it was like this April snap into a crispity crunchy peanut buttery butterfinger with Final Fantasy VII download code. And it was like so they wanted me to hit it within like a certain amount of time for the ad, but enunciate every word, make it sound like I'm a cool bro guy, but also like a sentence that no one would say normally to their friend. Like, I would never be like, yo, Jack, let's get a crispy, crunchy, peanut buttery <laughs> butterfinger to play Final Fantasy VII. Like, that's yeah. not a sentence anyone says. But they wanted it to sound like a guy, like a fratty dude just being like, yeah, dude, playing Final Fantasy, eating the butterfinger. <laughs> yeah, it'd be funny to actually do that to somebody for real now. Just, like, roll up to one of your buddies and say that. Like, what? I know, right? Be like, all yeah. right, let's go. Yeah. So, um, also, let's let's break it into the cannabis a little bit. Man. Hell yeah. You're, um, you're a frequent user, you've told I'd me. I'd say, yeah, most nights a week. Um, I... I Weed, especially smoking, is my go-to, like, I want to relax, end of the day. I don't smoke a ton and go out and do stuff. If, if I'm on, like, vacation or something, or I have, like, a very chill day, I'll smoke a little bit and go on a hike. But for the most part, I definitely am either, like, um, at home watching TV, unwinding, or if I'm out at a comedy show, typically after I perform. I don't really like performing high. Um, like, and I'm out socializing in that context. I don't drink a ton. You know, I when I was in college, I drank like nonstop. And then I sort of have in the past few years really transitioned. Um, I mean, I just like smoking much more. It's, uh, you know, I don't wake up the next day feeling like trash. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I also just also feel more just like fun. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm a fine drunk. I don't get like angry or anything, but I definitely feel sloppier when I'm really in it where I could get super high and I'm just like, Oh, I'm just like, taking it in man i'm just i'm just feeling good you know um i do I, I i vape i definitely like vaping edibles i like edibles but i've had too many too many times where like i just went way overboard you know yeah and uh like i'll tell you this one story i remember i was um i was throwing a party at my house a couple years ago and this is before like fully legal where people were still like really make out I mean people still make their own edibles but this is like back before you could just walk into a store and get edibles so it was like really the height of people just going to town making whatever they think 
is right, you know? So then one of my friends brought, and I had like 30 people in my apartment. And uh, one of my friends brought over like a plate of brownies, just set them down. And I didn't like even ask how strong they were. I just ate an entire thing. Oh, and she turned around. She's like, dude, that had like 300 milligrams in it. <laughs> so then I'm like freaking out because there's like people in my house. I already still feel myself like nodding off. And I'm thinking like, dude, all right. I got to like I got to wake up, man. Like this cannot happen. So I went and I was thinking like, all right, I'm going to like take a quick hot shower, like freshen up, just like get in there, like change and like get back in the party. For some reason I thought that would like energize me. And then you know when you're really in it, like you're you're everything's like moving very slow. You're almost I feel like it's like my mental state. You know when like a strobe light is going and you only see stuff like very choppy? Yeah, yeah. That's how my brain starts going when I'm like really on That's unedibles. a good analogy, yeah. It's like Yeah, right. It's like I, I, I kinda know what's going on, but it's still all over the place. Um and the, I remembered like being in the shower and I was like washing myself like like I'm loofing and I'm like, Okay, I know that I'm wet, but something is wrong. And I looked down and it still had like half my clothing on. <laughs> And I was like, God damn it, dude. Like, I still had on, like, my underwear and a T-shirt. And I just, like, got into the shower without, like, fully undressing. And then, yeah, I kind of, I don't really totally remember. I think I, like, got dressed and came out. And I was like, guys, I'm not feeling great. And people were just like, this motherfucker's so high. But it was, like, like, it was, they were cool. But after that, I've really paced myself on edibles. That's a smart decision. Yeah. I love them, but it's just... Did everybody stay at your place, or were you like, you got to go? Um, I think most people, like, filtered out. I had roommates. Like, it wasn't just, just okay. me there, but it was like I had, like, thrown the party, you know? Like, it was just, like, a bunch of buddies that I knew from comedy and other shit. Um, but I, I think people just, like, filtered out. I honestly don't totally remember. I was really fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I was, <laughs> thank God I was at my own house, because at least I could be like, guys, just, I got to go. I, I got to go to bed. Like, everybody, please go home. Yeah, yeah, it is a good thing you were there, or else you would have been like, uh, yeah, gotta get a lift or some shit, right? And also, like, I, I don't think I had done that many edibles before then. Like, I think I'd only done like tiny ones, so I had no, like, now I understand how intense they are. Back then, I was like, well, whatever, I smoke. Like, how different could it be? Well, at least that experience didn't scare you completely away, and you still kind of dabble. And, I, you know. I still dabble. It, it may, it more so, um, gave me an awareness of like years ago there was a time when i got really fucking blackout drunk and i fell asleep in somebody's yard and then <laughs> i woke and they didn't also like thank god for my like i didn't get in trouble because they they either weren't home or didn't notice but i like woke back up like it was like 7 a.m <laughs> on a sunday morning in santa monica and i'm like half in the grass half on the sidewalk and i just like came to and i was like holy shit and then from that moment on i've, I've never gotten that drunk again because that was like, oh, wow, like I got this close to the edge. I could have gone way worse for me. And now I know how to like. So same with the edibles. By the way, if anybody. Smart man, smart man. If anybody has edibles, like if you see me out one day at a comedy show and you have edibles, I will try them with you in small doses. <laughs> I'm not like anti-edibles. I just now I know how to like pace myself. Speaking of the comedy show, you yes. have done the Gateway Comedy Show with Billy Anderson. who has been on this pod before. Yeah, I actually haven't done it yet, but I am doing it. Um, so um, there's a festival in Alaska I'm doing in April. And the gateway is going to be in Alaska, and I'm oh, on right. that one. Yeah, I just haven't had a chance to do nice, it yet. But nice. I, yeah, yeah, I must Billy's... have been thinking of another poster. It must have been the one that you did with Nolan and uh, Mike. There. Yeah, I've done different shows with those guys. Um, I mean, Billy's awesome. I've been to the gateway a bunch. It's a phenomenal show. I love it. Um, but yeah, it's stoked. I'm gonna it, we're gonna be up in Alaska together doing a festival, and so one of the shows I'm doing in Alaska in Anchorage is the so it's the first week of April. If anybody happens to be in Anchorage, uh, you can follow my Instagram. It'll I'll be on there. Smoke, so. smoke some northern lights up, Hell man, yeah, and then I get right. Yeah, you ever been up there? No. Yeah, no. I haven't either. But I, I hear great things. Honestly, I've never heard anybody be like Alaska shitty. Everybody says beautiful. Dude, it knows. looks incredible. One of my goals as a comic is to perform at least once in every state. So I'm stoked to get that one checked off because there's. I think now I have like thirty something. There's nice. Thanks, that, dude. That's what's up, bro. Yeah, the the parts that are tough. There's a lot of area that's like Wyoming, Montana, the Dakotas. There's like nothing out there. So that whole portion is going to be tricky to get to. Um, and then the parts of the South I just haven't made it to yet. Eventually I'd like to. I just haven't done a whole lot of the performing in the South. Have you been to uh, Kansas at all? Or anywhere in the, kind of that region? I performed once in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, cool. cool. I think. It might have been Kansas City, Kansas. I forget which one. I'll have to go back and look at like my old posts. But I one of the two I performed word, in. Word, man. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Is I, that where you're from? Uh, New Jersey, but I lived in Kansas. Oh, got like it. Like seven years before I came out here. How was that? Cool, man. Uh, and that's where like all my family is. Ex cool. Uh, yeah. Basically everybody with the exception of one bro. Yeah. But so, you know, that's the most important part. If the family wasn't there, I probably wouldn't Dude, be like totally. trying to go back. You know. So I grew up outside of D.C., but my dad is from here and like he grew up in Reseda. 
So my dad's family is still all over California. So that was a big reason why I came out here. Oh, so nice, yeah, dude. it made it really easy when I was like, all right, I'm going to LA. I bet they're all like dope. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're cool. They live all over the state. So they're like, some of them live out like in the desert. And then one's in Orange, uh, one's in Palm Springs. Anyway, yeah. So how long have you been out here? Well, I've been back and forth a bit. I first moved here September of 2010, like right when I finished college. I'm like, I didn't have like a quote unquote plan, right? Like I went, I got a degree because I was like, well, I guess you're supposed to go to college. And I just like didn't, you know what I mean? What was the degree? Communication. Okay. Which I guess it helped me a bit. I mean, honestly, I think learning had, I learned more in my extracurricular stuff way more than I learned in classes. Like I was a big frat dude. I used to throw parties and I would like um, have nights where I would rent out a nightclub and then my frat would put on a party. We'd sell tickets. And like I learned a lot from doing that about like marketing and promoting and networking. Um, I went to Maryland, like big state school, like 25,000 undergrad. And uh, but anyway, so I get out of school. I came out here and I didn't I always had loved stand up, but I wasn't I, I just came to L.A. like I'm just going to try different jobs and stuff. So I like catered a bunch. I like did all these high end catering gigs just to pay my bills and sort of get settled in here. Um, like I worked at the Oscars, the Golden Globes, all that shit. And then I worked at a, I worked at a marketing firm. I interned at a talent agency, I, like all these things. Um, and then I worked at TMZ for a little bit. And I was there for a couple of years, and I was like, that's when I started dabbling in open mics and stand up. So I was doing comedy, but not full time. I was like, you know, here and there, but never got serious. And then um, my at the time girlfriend, she got into grad school in Boston. So, and this was in 2014. So I was like, oh, like LA is cool, but I'm down to try another city, right? And then I get to Boston, way smaller comedy scene. So when I get there, I go like all in. And it was way easier because out here, everybody's an entertainer, right? Boston, it's like you know, just a sm much smaller hub. So then when I was there, I started like using my skills from when I was in college and I started a bunch of my own shows. So I had a show. I made like half my living running comedy shows in Boston because I had a show I ran every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday, every Sunday, and then a monthly show on Thursdays. So I basically it was like a different bars in the area, the same way they pay to have like karaoke or trivia night. I was like, hey, man, let me, like, put on a comedy show. I'll bring in some big comics. You'll get your bar sales up. We'll take a cut of the door or whatever. And I did that for two years, came back to L.A. in 2016, and then I've been here since. Word. Are you doing anything like that out here and kind of running some shows? Sometimes. I kind of transitioned um, out here and more into just creating content um, with the Hence the Two podcast, and I've got, like, some other web series I'm writing right now. I like running shows a lot. I had a lot. I had a difficult time getting momentum in LA. Um, it's definitely possible. It's just a way different market here. It's, you know, super oversaturated. And if you have a really cool, unique show, like Gateway Show, you can make it happen. But, um, and I spent about the first year and a half here doing a lot of stuff. But I just sort of, um, it became less and less fun and there was less and less money to be made. So I just sort of shifted my energy towards, um, you know, making my own content more so than trying to get on other shows that being said like i do pop-ups here and there if you know i was chatting with somebody and they had a venue and you're like hey I, w I would love to try comedy night here i'm super open to that i just don't really have the energy or interest for the promotion side of like getting people in the door was always the hardest part out here it's really like i always really i still struggle with that with even my own shows like when i'm on the if you go 45 minutes outside of la it's like infinitely different, but be, I think because everyone here, even if they're not a, like a stage entertainer, they're one step removed from it. So it's not exciting in the same way, right? Yeah, and it's yeah, and it can be a little more selfish in that way, I guess. Yeah, and I don't know if that's the right word, but you know what I'm saying. I like, get it, dude. I have friends who are like good musicians, and I've never seen them live because it's like there's only like out here, there's only so many hours in the day, dude. Yeah, yeah like yeah, exactly. You're running the podcast, you're hustling the acting, you're mm -hmm. producing here. It's like how much time is in a day, and that's right. cool that you're always evolving and you know yeah thanks kind of yeah. yeah man that and that's why i'm happy too to have you on bro yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. the key right is just to figure out the next move yeah that's and that kind of goes back on like the through line of like my other podcast in the herd is like i feel like i the thing i found out here whatever you do like my brother lives here he's a professional drummer he's got a couple oh, music oh. projects he's involved with and you know, like my fiance is an actress, comedian too. And like the people that, and like one of my best friends out here is like, a, he started his own like carpentry uh, company. He makes like sick ass 
uh, custom furniture. Yo, if you're on Instagram right now, look up BMT Made. He takes like he has these like tables and he'll take like old train tracks and repurpose them into coffee tables and stuff. Um, That's really cool. My little brother's into that, so yeah, dude. check that out, Reed. <laughs> I, lo- yeah, I love that shit. My point is, um, LA is a amazing city for people who understand there's no uh, easy path, but there's infinite opportunities if you can hustle. Like like, like your shit too, man. Like you know, you you built up that whole YouTube channel. You, you have like a what, like fifteen thousand subscribers or something. Yeah, yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, right. But it's like it's a lot of work. It's a full time job. I think the misconception is people sometimes look at it from a distance where I'll speak to at least like some comics I know who like all they do is open mics and they're like, I'm just going to write my jokes and, you know, time will tell. It's like that. It doesn't work that way anymore, man. You have to be a 360 business. You have to do your marketing. You have to do all your accounting. You have to do all your like brand. You know what I'm saying? Like if you really want to do this, like one thing I hear a lot of comedians and I'm going on a, a little bit. No, of a no I like here. it. I like it. I'll tell you this one thing that really not makes me mad but kind of i roll my eyes at a lot of comedians ro- get very like man these youtubers and instagram influencers and tiktok people they're not like there's they're not funny they're not comedians and it's like listen people like what they like there's different tastes i understand that maybe because some of those guys are now doing stand-up right and some traditional stand-ups get mad about that they get very territorial very jealous over time but i look at it the same way as like Take two actors, right? You've got someone like Joaquin Phoenix and The Rock. Now, Joaquin Phoenix is a phenomenal actor. The Rock plays The Rock. But people who go to see The Rock, they don't give a fuck that he's not like an amazing actor. They're going for the product that The Rock creates, right? So some people, if you're a a thespian, you might look at The Rock and be like, oh, that's not real acting. Fine. But he doesn't, like he wouldn't say that and his fans wouldn't either. But he created a product that his market wants. So I just... I just have so little patience of like people hating on, you know, quote unquote, people who aren't playing by what they think are the standards of the game that they're in. And I see it a lot with comics who they think like, that's not real comedy. It's like, okay, well, maybe not to you, but this person created something and their fans like it. So who cares if you don't think it's real comedy? For sure. And that that brings back the point of like always evolving, not Mm -hmm. saying that some of those people aren't, but some probably aren't, you know, because it's like a lot of those people who are do have the comedy skills, you know, what's stopping them from doing that? It's kind of, yeah, well, it's, it's definitely a ton of work and another skill set to understand. Like I'm trying to teach myself now how to make like interesting content for these new apps. Like there's one called bite, which is like the new vine and like, yeah, or like, and I'm, to me, I'm always trying to like learn what everybody else is doing with their shit and how can I use it for me? So like that Butterfinger commercial I did, the kid who was like in front of the camera, um, he, um, what was it? his name is Jack something anyway um, he has like a million followers on TikTok and he, his background is he's a gymnast so he started making gymnastics videos of himself just doing like backflips and handstands and stuff on throwing up on, throwing them up on TikTok and then he was getting more and more followers so now I don't know if you, how much you like know about TikTok but it's sort of like the music you put with the videos is a big through line with that app right okay so a lot of music producers when we was telling me will pay him to put their music in his videos and he'll have it timed out where like he'll do a backflip and then the beat will drop like right when he lands and then you see in the video like uh this song by so and so musician and producer so it's like how they get their music out and he makes money creating this content and it's you know, I mean, imagine like a couple years ago being in any field, or maybe like now more like a decade ago, be like, ah, I'm not going to, the internet, that's dumb. I'm just, I'm not going to bother with the internet. I don't, that, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. was, that was an attitude though. Like that's where any, not even just like content creators, but any brand, any sort of business that needs clients. Like if you're not on all of these platforms, it's so stupid. You're, you're going to fuck yourself. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Uh, so what do you think of TikTok? I'm not on TikTok. Well, I don't – it's definitely meant for people younger than us. It, it's the main demo are like preteens and teens. And at first I kind of wrote that off like that's not who's coming to see my comedy. But at the same time, like, yeah, but in five to ten years they might be, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I read an article on Deadline that um, I forget the name of the director, but there's this director who's known for shooting really untraditional stuff. Like there was a movie called Hardcore Harry, and it was an action film filmed entirely from the first person. That movie's view. fucking badass. You know it, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. So that same guy is now making uh, a blockbuster filmed entirely vertical for like tablet viewing, like in that right, in, in phone viewing. I don't have any problems with um, 
with TikTok and these like short form media, I definitely think like my gut is to be annoyed like this is dumb but it just embrace it the market is what the market is you're like no matter how much you don't like it it's better to just see how the wind is like getting mad at the weather right if yeah. it's gonna rain learn how to build a fucking umbrella you know you can you can shout at the clouds all you want you're still gonna get soaking wet you know and there's so many ways to go about it especially in the entertainment business is there's no one right way yeah and that's kind of what i've been doing true buds you know is building it up like that so i can leverage it for more than one thing i think you could do videos on tiktok i don't know the rules about if, if they have content restrictions on cannabis but i guarantee you if you put up like you had to roll a spliff or had a, i put up one thing and they mess with me but i think like you were saying it was it just, on tiktok yeah mm -hmm. but i did have like i think i did hash tags or the title said something about cannabis but i could keep it more chill and not like so blatant but uh right but yeah i need to put more time myself into instagram i don't even fuck with twitter i need to i don't fuck with twitter anymore I, a little bit here and there i think twitter's on its way out and they all kind of come in waves you know maybe twitter will take a take a, uh excuse me have a big spike again i think if you're doing like sports commentary or news twitter's pretty relevant other than that i don't know but TikTok, I've I, I've been on it a lot because I'm trying to like keep tabs on like how does my content fit into this platform, and it really honestly makes me feel old because I watch it, and it's like I don't get it, man. Because like this one account I found, it's this little girl. She's like four million followers, and it's just videos of her doing her hair and lip syncing to music while she's doing her hair. That's it. That's all it is. And I look at this and I'm like, God, this is so dumb. But then I remember like when I was 12, I thought the greatest thing on earth was Jackass and Limp Biscuit. So it's not any different. It's just like my shit was dumb then too. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like this is what people that age like. Yeah. But it's it's definitely been a struggle to figure out what content I can put on there that makes sense for me. Yeah, huh? It's like how... Yeah, what jokes or what can you kind of... But I will tell you, I know, like, I've seen this, so more famous comedians, because TikTok is all about, like, the at least it started with all about lip syncing to music, so now there's really famous comedians like Chris D'Elia and Dane Cook and Dave Chappelle who it's someone else, like, quote-unquote, lip, -sync, lip syncing their comedy. So it's just, it'd be like if a guy like you is, like, just talking into your camera and doing, like, the mouthing the, the words of the stand-up bit from Dane Cook or something. And it has, like, millions of followers on these. That's, that's fucking crazy. Right? And that's all legit to do. There's no copyright infringement well, on it. Yeah, because it's just like if you were to lip sync List, a okay. video any, of, any, of any music. Because it's just on TikTok. It's not like you're profiting from it. I mean, I guess in theory you could profit if you leverage your followers, but it's not. True yeah. Buds TV TikTok uh, yeah. <laughs> lip syncing hip-hop account to weed songs coming up. You know what you could. I got five. <laughs> what's that? So what, yeah, that, that song you have for the intro, man. You yeah. could you could do that. You could lip sync your own theme song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. I got a hip-hop artist coming in here later tonight right. for our other session. Hell so yeah. I uh, might try to get him on a little something. Yeah. Do we have the capability to do that in here? If uh, he wanted to lay down, like if we had a beat and he wanted to lay down a little track. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we could figure that out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Work, work. We can do whatever you guys need. Third wheel podcast Third studio. Wheel. We got you. Probably yeah. not live instruments. Like I don't think we could get a drum set in here. Oh yeah, but. no, yeah, just <laughs> just some beat. And this new studio spot, first day in here, is fresh, yeah. feeling good. Thanks, dog. These um, guys don't play around here. Yeah. Excuse yeah, me. Oh, you're good, man. Yeah. You're good. So, um, yeah. What else is new, man? Or uh, any new like pro weed products you're fucking with, or just? Uh, actually, I had a question for you because yeah, yeah. you're like you know a lot more than me. Because when I go into the store, you know, I when the way I feel in the weed store it's kind of like when i'm when i need my car fixed like i'm getting a lot of information and i don't really know how accurate it is or like i i know that i love i'm actually a sativa guy more than an indica guy um and i i like ask questions to the to the bud tenders like and i've never gotten a straight answer so like when someone i look at like three sativas right I, I don't remember the names of them but if one's called like jack the ripper pineapple express and blue dream I'm, you know right what is the difference here? And I've never had like a real answer. Like to me, I just understand like one is an indica, one sativa, but like the nuances of how those are all different. I don't really get it. Yeah, I would say that's the right thing to say is the nuances, the little subtleties. Like they're all just bred differently. Okay. Um, different terpene profiles, so like different flavors. They might have a different percentage of THC depending mm -hmm. on the strain. Yeah. But a lot of times, I mean, it probably just comes down to me for it's like taste and preference okay. and smell. Um, because if you're looking at three and say they're all about the same THC content, yeah, 
to me, it's all kind of the nuance of what do you like. Right. You know, I tend to go for stuff like you're saying, Super <laughs> Jack or Jack Herrera, because maybe because that's my name. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a sativa guy or what's your go-to? I always was the most, most, and I would still say more than indica, but I find myself with indica more at night now. Interesting. Um, and some indica edibles and stuff. I've become a nighttime CBD guy. If I, if, if I don't want sativa, I actually, if I just really want to just like decompress from the day especially after like a really good comedy show you know i'm like at level 10 like my adrenaline's going so i, I need to like mellow out so i gotta i actually smoke these uh cbd cigarette pre-rolls um it's like it's like just like a cigarette i don't smoke tobacco but it has the same like exact rolling time it's like the for me the perfect amount because a lot of times i'll get like a, a full cbd pre-roll and i don't want to have the whole thing and it's kind of annoying to like put it out and hold yeah. on to it so yeah i was talking to mike on the podcast <clears throat> i did with mm -hmm. um him and he, Mike Mazzalotti, and yeah, he's like yeah, yeah. saying a little pre roll. He's like a point two five pre roll would be clutch for a lot of people because you don't need a lot more than that sometimes. Yeah, so. you know what I used to do before? You could just buy pre rolls at the store because I I was I'm still so bad at rolling my own. So I would buy flour, grind it up, and I would go to the store buy a pack of Black and Milds because it's got the little mouthpiece, and then you could like I would just like massage yeah, the yeah. thing and break out all the tobacco, but the tube would stay intact, and I would put flour in there, and I would make like a little like, you know, 10 hit little mini one, and it was perfect, and then if I was, especially if I was somewhere where it's illegal, I could just dump it, and like who cares, you know? Yeah, that's the nice thing about it. It's like throw, toss. Yeah. Yeah, I hope I helped that question you had about the dispensary. I don't know if I did there. No, but... you did. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, um, well, you know what I found the most interesting is, is, I smoked weed for the first time when I was 13, I think. I'm pretty sure. It was out of an Altoids case. My buddy took an Altoids Damn, case. Damn, <laughs> yeah. creative shit, man. I haven't seen that right. one yet. <laughs> so he took like the top and poked a bunch of holes in the top and then poked holes in the side and we smoked it from that. And it was not a good way to smoke at all. It was very inefficient and it burnt our mouth. But, you know, we were kids, right? And I just remember like, so I was 13. That must have been what, like 2002-ish roughly, you know, if you were smoking weed, society looked at you like you were kind of a dirtbag, right? I mean, maybe you were like, you know, a Willie Nelson type guy, but still, you were like a degenerate, you were a burnout. There was none of this like, oh, like you can, it's for wellness. It's just so interesting to me, like when I go into the stores now and I see all the marketing behind it, and we've got like CBD bath bombs and THC lotion. I think it's great. I mean, I'm glad that, you know, society seems to wake up to the notion that, oh yeah, it's not... The whole gateway drug concept is – it's no more a gateway drug than booze. Booze is way more a gateway drug, oh, yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, I would definitely agree with you. Yeah, man. But uh, it's funny. I mean, I guess there's some states. I think Louisiana is one of the worst. Most, I think mo almost every state in the country now, CBD at least, is basically decriminalized, I think. Yeah, and that's where it's crazy too, though, is because <clears throat> we could still have CBD flour. It's like – that's what I think is going to make it even turn federal like sooner. Yeah, is because people are going to have all the CBD shit, and they're going to be like, uh, cops are going to. Be like, I don't know what's fucking THC anymore. What's yeah. CBD? So let's just fucking legalize this shit. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting? I remember I read an article a while ago. I guess Missouri has like crazy strict laws, and it's I learned partly because they border Colorado, and they make so much money arresting people driving over state lines and you know i don't know the nuances of like how our legal system works in this context but basically you know it's just they have all this for whatever reason the the govern the citizens rather of missouri have not advocated for legal cannabis in that state and so the government makes a lot of money arresting people because they tend to go to colorado pick it up drive it over and it's just like how like how insanely stupid yeah is i that? had a lot of i had a lot of friends who would do that but i do know too though that missouri has made it medicinal oh they did okay yeah, so but it's not come. recreational but i know right. it's medicinal and from what I heard, they're supposed to open like 25 or 30 dispensaries in the next year. I mean, so. thank God, you know, the, the only I mean, I don't I, I totally understand if people don't like weed, that's fine. I get it, you know, but the thing that's insane to me is people who talk about it from like a health perspective and they still eat like McDonald's and are drinking a shit. Ton. Right. It's like, like, what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Fine. <laughs> Look, dude, if OK, you're going to you're going to eat like processed fast food and drink hard alcohol and then talk to me about how weed is bad for you. I have a friend like that. He's he's one of my boys, and he just he drinks probably every day pretty hard, and he's like yeah. talking shit on weed. I'm like, dude, you're getting drunk every fucking day. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Yeah, like, man. You know, I have <laughs> I have friends who are cops, and they've said they've never once responded to like a domestic issue when the person's smoking weed. It's always booze or like real drugs, like yeah. meth or something, right? Yeah, I had a regular at my bar a couple of years ago. 
and he was like, oh, he was dating this girl that was younger than him. Crazy story. Yeah. The girl kicked the shit out of him, broke his oh. fucking arm. This was guy she, was she, she like a trained fighter or something? No, she he's like she's she, just a badass. He, he was just bitch, a smaller yeah. old guy. Oh, okay, and then he's like, I found some edible wrappers in her car, these weed edibles. So I think that's why she did it. I'm like, buddy, that I, I was like, I don't think get, it was the weed, bro. I, I think she get, was on some other yeah, shit. Yeah, get out of here, dude. Oh so, my god, it's um, yeah, it. So so I have a part time gig where I work with a lot of tourists. And it's funny, people from other countries, they still, like, I'll give you a better example. My sister-in-law is from Brazil. So her family, um, lovely people, wonderful. But they still look at weed like heroin. I mean, they don't they don't understand. Like, they come up to visit, and they see these weed stores, and they're like, they think it's like people doing meth. It is, it's so foreign to them. And I don't know. I mean, it's just a, yeah, I don't know what it is about some countries, but they just have such a terrible. Like we were saying earlier, like Louisiana, people come out here probably be like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I met somebody recently who was out here for the first time from Georgia, and they're like, so like, um, like how's the weed work out here? <laughs> and I was like, Do you have your ID? And they're like, Yeah, it's like you just go into any dispensary. <laughs> like, for real? But like, can we smoke outside? I was like, I mean, don't do it like in a cop's face, but you know, it's like if you're just like on the sidewalk and you're being discreet, no one's gonna bother you. I'm like, really? I was like, Yeah. They were like so in shock. That's funny. Yeah, I was on this uh reminds me of I was on the cool nerd weed show yesterday. Yeah. And they were talking, they were smoking a joint on the corner, and some guy looked at him, walked by, he's like, I dreamed about this for like twenty years. <laughs> and, then I, and, then, and then I was joking to them. I was like, what are we going to dream about after, right. the poc- after the show stopped? Yeah. And I was like, what will you say to them? And I was like, when a doctor can smoke on the street, I'm going to walk uh, by a doctor and a nurse smoking. Yeah. Like, I th- I've been dreaming about that for 20 years because they can't smoke and their shit's stressful as fuck. Yeah, that is weird to me <laughs> that like if you're a doctor or like if you operate heavy machinery and stuff, like I understand obviously restrictions on having a certain window of time before you're on your ship but like you can drink alcohol in your free time and then go back to work like it, you know what i mean it just, yeah that's why it's dude you could you could do a ton of blow the night before wake up it's out of your system and then go and they'll never know and you could just go and do open heart surgery yeah and that's where it's crazy i'm not yeah it's like not don't blaze one before you do some crazy surgery but after doing an open heart surgery saving somebody's life or god forbid losing a life a little weed yeah, might you, help you somebody need to mellow out yeah. a little bit yeah, <laughs> yeah. shit Oh man, That's some real shit. I actually, it's funny because like, uh, you know, cops can't smoke weed, and I feel like you should have to smoke weed if you're a police officer, just to see what it's like to to know it, or just to just chill, like <laughs> like, like yeah, just to relax. Like, but you know, they have to do like therapy after they like fire their weapon. Cannabis should be mandatory. I mean, I'm half kidding here, but like, yeah, yeah. for sure, dude. Think about like how like you know when you see the I, again. I have a lot of respect for good police. I'm not taking away from that, but like. There's a lot of dickhead cops out there, and I think if they just were a little bit more, just mellowed out, you know, they wouldn't be so like at level ten, right? Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, and that brings me to a random thought. Yesterday sure. or a couple of days ago, I was getting my haircut from this yeah. haircut from this guy named Dante in K Town. Yeah, and he was telling me about the riots and shit, you know, and how like how crazy it was in '92, yeah. and then he was telling me how crazy the streets were next to kind of where I live. Yeah, and he was he um, credited legalization for cleaning up a lot of the street corners because he said. Good. Once it, once it became yeah. legalized, he said the gangs weren't fighting over the weed territory, nice. which I don't I don't know enough about it to completely sure. agree, but it made perfect sense, and that's a lot of people's arguments for re- yeah. uh, legalization in general. I think uh, I think psilocybin's next, and then I think after that we should probably take a hard stop from legalizing. Drink, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like some. I mean I don't know. I'm not. I don't have any like hard research, but like, and I don't think anyone's advocating for like legal cocaine. But I think like. That's that's a thing where like maybe let's you know because I've heard people argue like well if you start with the weed what's coming, which I get the fear there but I I think most people would agree like marijuana maybe psilocybin mushrooms, everything else is separate, you know yeah you know and that's where I don't I'm not sure how I feel exactly on that because like I, like I was saying with this maybe that would help clean up other stuff too yeah. Because people have access to it, it's hard to say. The well, or it could just get abused a lot more, yeah. like pharmaceuticals have been for the past. I'm um, yeah. Oh. I mean, well, so I guess to to uh, clarify my point a bit more, I'm actually open to learning a lot more about decriminalizing hard drugs because I think we have a lot of wasted resources on you know prosecuting all that. But I can't. It would it would be hard for me to imagine a world where you could go to like the store and buy an eight ball of coke. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that. So like... You imagine like the blo- like. Also, like how funny! <laughs> what that's a funny sketch. Like the guy who works at the cocaine store. It's like the most efficient <laughs> staff of all time, right? They're all just like, "Oh man, what do you need? What do you got? What do you want?" Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, would there be strains? It would just be right. There's no like strains of cocaine. It's just they probably would start doing some different. They'd invent it. Yeah, I guess they would. 
do you need a little get me up in the morning? Right. Yeah. Get our new. <laughs> right. This is like if you need to wake up before work. This is if you want to go out and party all night. This is if you want to uh, still be able to get your dick hard, but you still want to be alert. Like, yeah. It's all the same shit, just in different packs. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's so funny. Um, Th- that's how I feel about some weed products every now and then. I'm like, is this really that different of a. Yeah. Product? There, There's a certain point. I mean, yeah. Like, I saw a thing online. Um, you know what the the big one I've I think we've gone overboard with is all the different CBD paraphernalia. Yeah. You know, like I saw a thing online that some I think it called like Abracadabra or something. Some some women's uh, fitness clothing line was selling. This is a real thing. CBD infused sportswear. So it's a sports bra in in leggings, and it's like two hundred and fifty dollars or something insane. And I guess there's some kind of microfibers where they have CBD oil put into the clothing, and so it's good until you wash it. No. <laughs> so the website says it's good for 40 washes, which is still not that many. And then after 40 washes, you can mail the clothes back in and you get a discount code to buy your next one. But at that point, just buy fucking CBD lotion and put it on yourself. For real. It's just, it, I think it's one of those things, there's a lot of benefits to CBD. And I think I encourage people if they're curious to look into it and try it. But there, there is a point where like the word becomes trendy. And then people just like r- run like crazy with it. Yeah. And it's like when you see shit like that, I would be like, and you see some random stores, you know, brick and mortar stores, at least me, I'm like, there's no way this is going to last. Mm-hmm. Like some right. of the, some of these CBD ideas I see, I'm like, who the fuck is financing this? Well, like, and I also learned apparently, like I was in, um, God, I was on the road recently. I was in some state, Ohio or somewhere where they don't have legal THC, where they have legal CBD. But then I realized I was doing some research because I was at a gas station and they had like CBD, whatever. You can just call something CBD. There's no, like, regulation against saying, like, I can just make a piece of candy and just say, oh, it's CBD candy. It's just what I call it. It's and, like the whole organic and natural yeah, thing almost. so like, they're just, like, straight up lying to people. So if you're going to get CBD, get it from, like, a real dispensary or someone that you know is legit. Because apparently, yeah, yeah, apparently you could just buy, like, anything. It's just, it's just literally like a piece of gum that they're just labeled. Oh, it's CBD gum. Remember those bracelets they had years ago with, like, magnets in them? And it was supposed to, like, I don't know if you ever saw these, but it, um... It was one of those like late night infomercial bullshit things, and it was supposed to like help your balance and stuff. Like what pictures wear, like the eye and eyes necklace. And yeah, shit. and it's complete shit. It's just it's all mental. It's like that people take it like this the fake CBD. Like no, I feel it. And it's yeah. like, no, you don't. You're just convincing yourself you didn't waste thirty dollars at the gas station. For real, and I could see how people would spend money where it's not legal. Like oh, I can get CBD here, and you know. Yeah. Or... Well, another even more reason to legalize it federally. Yeah. Yeah, people just... Which I hope they do, but, you know, I don't know. Depends yeah, who on... knows? But, yeah, the CBD game is crazy, bro. Yeah. I wonder how many companies, like, if I had to guess, there's probably, <sighs> fuck, in the past, like, five years, there's probably been th- literally thousands and thousands of CBD companies. Well, I think the main benefit, too, is for so many people, like, I, I love a good sativa high where I'm like, my brain's going in weird places. That's fun for me. I come up with good ideas for jokes and I just like, I just like exploring my brain in that way. But a lot of people I understand, they don't like going that deep into their own thoughts. So sativa especially, or just THC in general, it's too much for them because they get paranoid and scared. I weirdly like it for some reason. So I think for CBD, for a lot of people, when they realize like, oh, your brain is totally there. It just really calms your anxiety. Like my fiance takes CBD pills every day. Not every day, but a lot, you know, and just like helps her like really calm down. She has anxiety and just kind of gets high strung sometimes. She'll pop one, she'll just be like relaxed, calms her nerves. And it's fucking way better than some over the counter prescription. Fuck yeah. Yeah. That's, and I would probably buy more stuff like that CBD. Yeah. But for me too, I'm like, uh, when I could spend $50 on a CBD product, I'd rather spend something that's going to get me like well, stoned yeah. out. Yeah. You're like me too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I definitely do like once in a while, like if I'm camping or something, really going hard at edibles. Where if I don't have to be anywhere, if I can like, like, um, settle in for the night and just kind of like like you ever go out to uh, Joshua Tree? I need to. No, I've never haven't. been. No, no, dude, it's sick. Yeah, so I've if, seen like some videos my friends have done and shit. I'm like, damn, this looks. I mean, I love especially when you're out in the desert like that because it's so dark. You can really see the sky in a way that you can't anywhere else. And just you know, take some good edibles and just post up and like. I mean, that's what our ancient ancestors used to do. They would just you know, it, there was complete darkness once the sun went down, and they would just look at the stars and come up with cool shit and you know, imagine the universe. Those stars put life in perspective. It's it's really think about how recent it is that we've stayed awake past sundown. What like two hundred years, if that? Yeah, it's really I mean, yeah, it's weird when you start thinking about it because I know I'm a night owl myself, and I'm like shit. Yeah, you can't even around here. You can't see the stars for shit. No, not at all. But I mean, even like 
I mean, I suppose maybe like in like the colonial era, people still were uh, out at night occasionally, but for the most part, I mean, this is, a, this is kind of a random tangent, but you're going to have to find like, yeah, you have to have a lantern and shit. You got to yeah. have like, I just wonder like what, how different we've become as society because we don't allow our brains to wander in that way, you know, like in that, like, like just, just like just being so involved with like what's in front of you right now and like looking into the stars to imagine i was about to say yeah that's more outer and i feel like now like that's more outer and kind of realizing the whole universe and mm -hmm. now it's just kind of more inward like looking at instagram or something yeah man one of my friends she i'm trying to do more of this when she go, like goes to work for the day or somewhere where she can like be, she doesn't have to have her phone she completely turns it off and like puts it in a drawer because and this happens to me too like so many times your phone isn't giving you any notifications and it's almost like it's passive aggressively being like hey jack nobody cares about you nobody's thinking and you feel you. your phone you're like, is it vibrating right and it's like <laughs> and it's like you're thinking it for for no reason at all and it's just like like your your psyche's being like yeah no one's telling you any no one's no one's liking your stuff nobody likes you nobody's thinking about you yeah. nobody's trying to get a hold of you it's like dude get out of here it's like the word yeah no i feel you too and actually this is the first time i've had it on here on the cushion i like to put it on airplane mode and mm -hmm. just when i'm in the studio that's one of, that's why it's so nice too i don't yeah. worry about that bro it's just like that this podcast right now kicking it right here with alex that you know? is one of my favorite things about podcasting yeah. it's like it's a, it's a scheduled time sit down for an hour just have a good conversation unless i have to look up something real quick i don't even like yeah like you said put the phone on airplane mode and just uh you know we don't do that enough for real you know it's weird it's like it's like we as people have like plugged into the to like the grid for lack of a better word and we just never unplug ever we're just like we're in it all the time and and when i do unplug i feel kind of weird i'm like i haven't been on my phone in a day or two like when yeah. over a christmas vacation i just like put it away i'm like this feels fucking weird well and it's also you ever watch black mirror yeah yeah dude i love for me oh man great night rip a sativa bowl like a good one and then just go into an episode of black mirror and like one of my favorites was um i forget which one but there was like a like the woman's husband or someone died and they had this new technology where they could like take all his like online data, like everything he's tweeted, videos, whatever, and then put it into like a robot that looks just like him. And he could like live after he's dead. And like we're I really feel like we are heading in that direction. I think we'll hit that point where they can download our brains, essentially. That's some crazy stuff, man. It's already <laughs> coming, dude. You know, what? for yeah. real. I mean, think about think about right now how much information your phone has about you. Too damn much. It knows every, It knows all your fears. It knows your turn ons. It knows your turn offs. It knows what. It knows of where I'm going to be. What I'm about to do. It knows everywhere you go. It knows <laughs> every dollar you spent on anything. You know. Shit. I'm going back to Boost Mobile, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, but for real, man. Thanks for stopping by today. Dude, it was great, man. Was that an hour? Wow. That flew by, man. Holy shit. So everybody, go check out those podcasts. Follow up. Uh, it's at yeah. Alex Getlin. Yeah, right? at Alex G E T T L I N on Instagram. All my stuff's on there. At this Thin is, the Herd. Uh, yes. And House Rules. Yes. At Thin the Herd Pod. At House Rules Pod. I'll definitely have you on Thin the Herd soon. I got a bunch. Of, I got a bunch of uh, weed news stories we're gonna break down, and I get your thoughts on when we do that episode. Word, man. I'm gonna give you one of these things here from a shout out to Spoonheads again for sending these out. These little scoops, scoop heads. I don't know why I said spoonheads, but yeah, some little uh, dope scoops you can put in your grinder, load a bowl. This dude. is like a dope looking comic book thing. I'll throw your way here, I man. Dude, I love it, man, because that's one of the things right now. I just use my fingers, and it always gets crap on my yeah, fingers. You could even so. load a, like a blunt up joint. Perfect. With that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what's up. Shout out, scoop heads. Good luck on that. I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right. Thanks, dude. Yeah, man. Thank you. This is true buzz. That Mary Jane, now we ain't new to this. For my stoners and for my cannabis enthusiasts. Never heard a show as good as this. Yeah, number one, it's the best. Bringing in many special guests in the industry of cannabis. Business owners to growers, even artists you know of. So sit back and just roll up the perfect show for my smokers. True buzz.